September, which means it's time to promote some players to the MLB. And I think it's pretty safe to say that Dolander and Murillo have shown us that they are ready to make their MLB debuts today. Two of the very best we have in the organization. And I'm stoked to see our first prospects make their first MLB debuts. And it's going to be against the division rival Giants team on the road in one of the more beautiful parks in all of Major League Baseball. Rafael Murillo will be the first guy that we'll see make his debut today. We'll have to wait a couple of games for Chase Dolander was absolutely mashing in AAA OPS over 1100 in his at bats there first pitch he's ever going to see is going to be in for an extra base hit down the right field line and not going to pick up an RBI here as the man will hold at third but the first career hit of Rafael Murillo does not take long. A double with the first pitch you saw at the Major Leagues. Robbie Ray here, the pitcher. This one struck well by Murillo, but he unfortunately hit it right to left field there. If he found the gap there, that one could have had some serious extra base potential once more. Down the third base line and fair for his second hit of the day. Colorado needs some run support. Murillo trying to help out with that, but needs some of his teammates to come along. Top of the seven, still scoreless. Pop up here to foul territory. Going to be handled easily by Flores. Two for four so far for Murillo as we get top of the ninth. One more chance. It's a deep to right field. Going to go off the wall. Another extra base hit and an RBI for Rafael Murillo. Trying to get three. And he's tagged out. Doesn't really have the speed to get three very often. We're going to watch some more games. I want to watch his first home run. We've yet to see this player despite the fact that he's hit a ton of home runs at the minor leagues. Want to see his first home run. Here he picks up an RBI. Top of the first. Now back up top of the third. One down and no one on. Another base hit. He is racking up the hits so far today. 6-0. Colorado lead. And he's done it again. This guy is hitting pretty much everything he sees. He's getting pitches to hit for sure, but he's taking advantage of them. He's making the most of his opportunities. This is his first extra base hit so far, but this guy has been awesome. Three for three. Chopper down to shortstop here will be his first out of this second game and Colorado would eventually come up victorious here three for four in just his second game at the major leagues still of course waiting for that first home run and maybe we'll get it today but we're getting something a little extra today as well as this would be the game where we would see Chase Dolander make his professional debut at the major league level starting for the Rockies but we're going to get one Murillo at bats before we see him take the mound for the first time Sw uh, striking out swinging at that curveball inside his first time striking out Dolander to Tucker here up the first baseline handled by Cavadas but felt like he should have easily Got on first himself, but getting the pitcher a little bit of exercise, I suppose. Not the easiest lineup to make your first career start against, but 
He's going to be playing in a lot of tough games, so might as well get them started here right away as a fly out to right field. Down goes Jeremy Pena, Jordan Alvarez, very talented player, and he strikes out swinging at the inside changeup. The first career strikeout of Chase Dolander going to be against Jordan Alvarez. An impressive player to get your first against. Second inning now for Dolander. Pitch bottom in the zone. Going to get off the glove of the diving Murillo. So Yaner, Yaner Diaz, excuse me, will get on base. Altuve up, swiping at the high fastball. Second strikeout of the day for Dolander. This one lifted to center field, chasing after his Cerny, and he dives, making the play. What an effort over in center field. I got to see that one again. Used every bit of his speed. His ability in the field is why we took him in the Rule 5 draft. 100% route efficiency, and he needed to be right at that 100. Olander gets Kepler out looking. And he's ended both the first and the second inning with a strikeout. Liking what I'm seeing so far from Dolander through two. Just one hit allowed. And three strikeouts on the board. Back up for the third inning. We've got Jose Abreu who will draw the walk. First walk allowed in the career of Dolander. Another off-speed pitch here. Hit to Ryan Bliss for the easy out. He's transitioned over to second with Murillo, although it's probably better to have those switched because Bliss is the better defender. I just think, you know, Murillo's the shortstop of the future. Want to get him some reps there right now. Wild pitch will advance the run of the third, though. It's not much of a problem with two outs and the third consecutive end Inning ending strikeout for Dolander. This dude knows how to end innings in style. Still just one hit allowed. Rafael Murillo would be back for his second plate appearance of this game. Solid hit over to right field, but just couldn't find the gap, so he will fly out. Dolander, strike three looking on Jordan Alvarez. Second time striking him out today. Fifth strikeout overall. Diaz, the only hit today. And here he gets a little bit more than a hit. He's going yard. No doubt about it. Over to left field. And the first career home run allowed. And the first career hit allowed. Both to Diaz. His 28th home run. Definitely a big time power threat for the Astros this season. And that will tie this game up at one apiece with one gone here, bottom of the fourth. Really good game so far from Dolander. We've seen him rebound very well from a home run allowed before. Let's see if he can rebound here in the fourth. Gets that second out to Altuve pretty easily. That'll bring up Jock Peterson. Pitch low in the zone. Going to get to Ryan Bliss. And the easy out there. Good job re rebounding from the home run allowed. One apiece with both teams having two hits as well. Fifth now. Kepler up to the plate. He's going yard. Left field once more. The Houston Astros. Trim this to a one-score game. Was just about to say that we're getting some run support. But Houston gets one of those runs right back. The second home run in four batters for Dolander. And you definitely need to worry about pitchers that let up a lot of home runs when you're playing a Colorado Rockies franchise. 
He's been playing really well, except for the fact that he's allowed two home runs. But that's a pretty big caveat. Perhaps confidence waning here. He now allows the walk. That'll bring up the nine hitter. Struck well to left center field. Cerny giving chase and it's going deep again. The third Houston home run. In seven batters. In the last seven batters, he's allowed three home runs and a walk. His confidence is shot after a really strong start. Houston takes the lead. And you just got to be worried with all these home runs allowed from Dolander. Going to be a sour end to what was a promising first start for Chase. That being said, hopes are still very, very high for this player. He showed off in those first three innings exactly what has Colorado excited for him. So let's go back to some more Murillo at-bats and see if we can't find this guy's first career homer. Not going to come here, but he will get on base for the first time in this game. We'll have to wait a little longer before he has his first career hitless. Or who knows, it might be a lot longer. I wouldn't mind that. Rocky's back in the lead here, top of the seventh, and walking over to first is Murillo. Top of the ninth now, striking out, swinging. Won't be adding any insurance runs, but it wouldn't matter as the Rockies were to pick up the victory in Houston. So no loss to be appointed to Chase today, which is, I guess, a silver lining. For the way his outing ended. Ten hits for the Rockies. Six runs scored. Now we're in Coors. This seems to be the time for Murillo to get his first career home run. But he is going against a very talented pitcher who should be playing in our division. I don't know how the game didn't have the accurate rosters when we started this franchise. Because Cease had been traded and I did use the live rosters. I should have checked. That's on me. But I just assumed that it would be accurate. Which is just a bad assumption to make with this game. That is one of the weaknesses of MLB The Show. Their starting rosters are... But anyway, back to Murillo here. Still unable to get a hit today. He did draw a walk. So his first hitless game despite reaching base there. Hitting 438 as we get to this home game against Soroka. Not going to be a home run, but it is going to be a big time extra base hit. A two-run double for Rafi here in his first at-bat against Mike Soroka. A big player in Mr. Hurricane's athletics franchise last year. Back on top, bottom of the third, excuse me. Nobody out. He's going to ground out easily here. Bottom five now. Davy Garcia in the game pitching. Pop fly into the infield. Handled easily. 6-2 is the Rockies' lead here. Bottom of the seventh. Hit deep into the outfield, but... Certainly not going to leave the yard handled easily by Robert. Bottom nine now. This is the situation you want. A homer here would be a walk-off. Can he pick the perfect time for his first ever home run? Hit well to left field. It is fair. Out near the warning track. Not going to leave the yard. But it is going to be a game-tying double. Very clutch hitting from Rafael Murillo. Not needing an acclimation period at all into the MLB. He's coming in and he's hitting instantly. Just still waiting for that home run. Why won't this guy hit a home run while we watch? Strikes out there on another walk-off opportunity. So... Brand new game here, bottom of the first. One on 
One down for Murillo. Going against Nick Nastrini. There it is! The first career home run for Rafael Murillo. The future of this Colorado Rockies organization of these position players. 483 feet. He blasted that ball. Now, I was a little disappointed at how long it was taking him to hit a home run, so I changed his hitting from whole field to pull. And the first pitch he saw after I did that, he hit for a home run. Don't know if I'm going to make it that long term, but if it's going to help him hit home runs in the games that we watch, I don't mind it. We have a lot of hitters that actually hit whole field. And so if we change one guy to pull hitting, I don't mind it at all. Dugout giving them the silent treatments, but then congratulating the young future star on his first career homer. Wouldn't see the rest of this game. We were really just waiting for his first home run. And the Rockies would come out on top. Rafael Murillo would have a double in this game as well and earn himself player of the game honors. A 7-2 victory over the Chicago White Sox. That's going to end off the season for us, starting with the minor leagues where we'll have to take a look at the stats now or else they will be erased. So we'll just go through the two minor league affiliates, look at the guys with B or higher potential to see where they end up this season. Starting here with Kyle Brown, up to a 71 overall. Not a good year contact-wise for him, but his power did develop a little bit. That's what we were wanting to see from him. Um, clutch looking really good at 80. We just need him to show more consistency with the contacts and i think he could be an early call up next year to triple a brian doe very good season for him to hit 285 with these contact numbers plus 10 contact righties is really really good and uh hit righties better than lefties this year surprisingly ends up with a 5.1 war and 22 home runs at double a awesome season from him Jordan Beck technically C potential, but still somebody that I think has big league potential. So his season, uh, he has power versus lefties into the 60s, which could help him uh, make the jump to the majors. I think we'll put him up in AAA next year, despite the fact that he was a negative war player. I just think he's going to be 24 years old. Time to make or break, I think, with Jordan Beck. Michael McGaffick here. Uh, got up a couple overall to 69. Nice. Uh, pitcher clutch up four. He desperately needed that. I was hoping for maybe even a little bit more, but we'll take plus four. Still in the 30s, though, and that just needs to continue to come up. He has good hits per nine, but that really goes to waste uh, when you have clutch so low. So ended up with a pretty good year. Could be a guy that gets up to AAA early on next year. Don't know if he'll start there, but at 69 overall, he'll be... 23 years old, probably about time we think about it. Jeff Ramirez here, a guy I think for sure we're going to give a chance at AAA. Was an awesome clo closer for us. 46 saves to so just two blown throughout the year. Great ERA and whip where you want to see them. 60 strikeouts in 52 innings. I don't know how that equates to just one strikeout per nine. That doesn't compute to me. You have more strikeouts than innings, but your K per nine goes up one. But it is what it is. I think he deserves a shot at Triple A. Drew Romo um, ended up, you know, taking good advantage of the fact that, that he went down to Double A this year. Um, could be a guy that if you know Salas ends up on the big league roster, he replaces him at Triple A. But he'll stay in Double A as long as Salas is up in Triple A for us. And then the last guy with B potential is Johnny Brennan. Does get into the 60s this year. Not a great year stats-wise for him. Wasn't expecting him to be great as he was in the 50s. Double A is more for, I think, guys in the 60s. So hopefully getting a better season from him next year. His stamina, after all is said and done, training him in the entire year in it, it goes up one. So uh, there you have that. He was also wasn't a starter. He, um, You can see he was a long reliever. So maybe we actually have him start and that could help him get his stamina up. I think that's probably a wise decision to do that for next year. 
And then he's not uh, B potential either, but I want to talk about uh, Maori Lozano, who will also be up at AAA next year. Uh, just a fantastic season in his 30 innings pitched. Less than a one ERA, less than a one whip. Couldn't find any situation to hop in with him. I tried when we did the critical situations when we were looking at Jeff Ramirez to hop into some games in the eighth inning with him on, you know, on the mound. But all the critical situations just ended up with us in the ninth inning. So didn't get to see him, but excellent year. Going to be a Triple A pitcher for us next year. Speaking of Triple A, let's talk about. The guys who ended the season on that AAA roster, Ethan Salas is a guy who I think is going to get a spring training invite for us for next year. Um, gonna be a positive got asset in the field, you know, as soon as he steps up to the majors. And that hitting is good enough that I think he should at least give a, get a shot in spring training. If he, you know, impresses in spring training, could make the opening day roster next year or I'd be happy to have him at AAA for a little bit longer to develop the hitting just a bit more. But plus nine contact versus lefties is nice. Plus five power versus righties is also pretty dang good. Vision got up into the 50s, which is almost there. So Salas, definitely close. Another guy who could be in consideration for a spring training invite is Sterling Thompson, just because he's going to have very nice contact versus righties. Could be a guy that we um, played only against the righties, a platoon player for us to start. But it's going to be 24 years old. I think you invite him to spring training, see what he's got. Zach Veen definitely invited to spring training. He's already on the 40 man, so no reason to keep him, you know, away. But great contact here against lefties. A lot of these guys ended up doing well kind of in their reverse splits this year, which is surprising. Not doing as good against righties. In fact, his overall hitting versus righties goes down while his hitting versus lefties goes up a combined to 13. So odd year for Zach Fien. Uh, gonna get a get, get a chance to have an impressive spring and maybe make the opening day roster. But good chance he's also going to start in triple A next year. That's kind of it for triple A. You know, we took our two best triple A players and and uh, put them on the roster already. And um, these aren't their final stats. We still got a little bit to go in the majors, which will finish off that season now. Our double A team did make the playoffs this year, but they would lose in said playoffs. And then the Rockies will finish season two at 41 and 121, our rule five roster. Unsurprisingly, not very good. You have to imagine that uh, I won't show standings here. I'm going to have to find them right here. Um, worst team in the league, you've got to imagine, by 20 wins. The Nationals were the second worst. 19 wins, ex to be exact. Worse than everybody else. If we take a look here at the statistics, you've got just... Uh, not going to be a lot uh, of good to point out, but, you know, the leader in home runs for us will be Carlos Cortez with 14 on the board. 59 contact, righty, 60 power. Where is, uh, I know double digits. We had double digits for, our, for uh, what's his name? Locklear. For some reason, they just uh, put him up to, put him down at AAA. So he actually had... 17 homers so he really let us for some reason the game just automatically demoted him to triple a for a reason that i'll never know but only two guy, only three guys had double digits for us in the season ryan bliss ended up providing some pretty surprising power uh we drafted him for his defense and more his contact but he provided some power for us which is a nice surprise uh, colby thomas had nine as far as average goes, Trey Lipscomb only had four at-bats, but he got two hits, so maybe should have given him a little bit longer um, this season. And on base, also leads there. Kevin Newman with 333, uh, Perez with 305, and Chavis were the only guys to hit OBP 300+. plus. 
And then slugging, only guy with over 400 was Carlos Perez in 181 at-bats. OPS, only two guys in the 700s. That would be Newman and Perez. Kevin Newman had the most walks. Kobe Thomas struck out the most. Triples, we were led by Kevin Newman with five. Doubles, he led us as well. So Kevin Newman was pretty solid, particularly against lefties where he got plus 10 contact. He is a free agent. I think we're going to try to bring him back to platoon him against lefties um, for next season. He also has some good position flexibility. If we go to war here, Newman would lead us by a wide margin. Only two players with a war above one. Ryan Bliss and Kevin Newman. Excited to hopefully bring back both of these guys. Kevin Newman, there's no guarantee because he is a free agent, but Bliss will have back for sure. Taking a look at our worst players, Marty Costas. Um, he might not be back. Michael Chavis, surprisingly tied for our, our yeah, a worst war, I should say. He was our second round pick. Kobe Thomas, unfortunately, just not a great year for him. For some reason, they have Drew Romo. Why do they make all these changes without my permission at the end of the year? It's really, really annoying. Or pitching. Pitching, I think we had a little bit better representation here. Um, Chase Dolander would end up actually leading us in ERA. He had a nice bounce back after a rough uh, debut that he showed us here, but ended up starting five games. Uh, was one and two in those games. 29 innings and 27 strikeouts is pretty dang good. Did allow five home runs. Gonna be something we're gonna have to monitor. But um, pretty good season from him. Smeltzer ended up with a sub four ERA. I kind of dropped off towards the end of the year. He was more in the mid to even low threes throughout the season. One, three, two whips, pretty good. And then Connor Overton just really, really struggled down the stretch of this season. Was a guy who had also had his ER in the threes for a while, but got it up above five by the end of it, which you just hate to see. Guys like Santana, Rodriguez, Beck, Reeling. Even Underwood, another guy who really struggled down the stretch after having a good start. 30 saves to find five blown saves. Uh, guys with ERAs above five are probably just going to let them go and try to find some new players in the Roll 5 draft in the offseason, which will be in this episode. We had, you know, the offseason be its own episode last time, but that's because I was taking an entire roster in the Roll 5 draft. Since that won't be the case, there's not a ton to do in these off seasons. So we're going to, for the most part, just tack them onto the end of the seasons, which we'll be doing today. John Curtis uh, just didn't get any time. I guess he was playing in double A or triple A this year. So uh, there is that. So with that, let's get this off season moving along. Before we do that, let's take a look at awards as well. Your NL Rookie of the Year is Tyler Locklear. So you love to see it. Shohei Otani, your National League MVP with Nolan Jones right behind him. Second place in MVP. He had 29 home runs. He hit 352 for the Padres this year in 623 at-bats. OPS over a thousand. My goodness, a 7.9 war. He was the best player on the Padres. I mean, I knew we were giving them a good player. I didn't imagine this kind of success from Nolan Jones, though I must admit. American League MVP is Corey Seager, 292 with 38 home runs, but what a crazy season. Shohei, let's see what he did. Pitching. Pitching, not a great year for him. It's a 2.3 war season pitching, but I mean, he, uh, how do I, there you go. 45 home runs and batting over 300. Yeah, that'll do it. Going through the awards now, Cy Young goes to Michael King of the Padres here. And Pablo Lopez, Nolan Jones wins your batting title. Insane. Adley Rutschman wins it for the American League. Fairbanks and Minter are your relievers of the year and then we had the top three vote getters for nl rookie of the year ends up being locklear who led us in home runs daniel espino wins it for the guardians over in the american league hank aaron award goes to nolan jones so i think the padres 
are happy with the trade so far, you'd have to imagine. We're just gonna quickly go through these golden gloves and these silver sluggers here. Um, Hassan Kim in the division, it's himself a gold glove. And silver slugger now up. We got Shohei Otani in the division winning one. Um, see if anybody else either on the team or in the division won themselves an award. Fernando Tatis is a silver slugger here in the outfield. No surprise there. He is very good. And then Mike Trout still winning awards here at the age of 33. But that'll do it for the awards. Now, let's get to the offseason, simulate the postseason here. And the Dodgers have won back to back World Series here in our Rockies franchise, just proving that we've got ourselves a mighty foe to conquer in the division. We're a long way from doing it, but I like the fact that the Dodgers winning this much is going to be, you know, a major challenge for us once we actually, you know, get to the point where we're good. Forgot to take a look at what Rafael Murillo ended up with here at the end of the season, so let's take a look now. In 80 at bats, he had 25 hits, nine doubles, four homers, uh, struck out 18 times, walked nine times for an average of 284, slugging of 523, which is awesome, and 876 OPS. Got himself a full war in his limited action with us. He was so good. It took him a little bit of time to get that first home run. And if you notice his hitter tendency, I have changed it to pull hitter. It was whole field, um, but before that, game where he hit the home run i changed it to pull hitter just hoping that it could maybe help him get a home run and then he crushed his first pitch so if it's going to help him get home runs i'm going to change his hitter tendency he, he was obviously doing a fine job getting them in simulation but i'd like to see some home runs in you know the games that we watch as well we have a lot of guys who have whole whole field hitter tendency so i wanted to mix things up with him i don't like to edit stuff like that a ton but I'm fine to do it occasionally. Got ourselves a couple of coaching needs to feel. What about Pete Brown here to be a new uh, hitting, uh, sorry, pitching coach? I think he's a little bit older, so he might like a two year deal. What about two years, three million? That gives him full interest, just like that he doesn't have any negatives and he has plus two to home runs per nine. Obviously, rating we've been paying a lot of close attention to. And then here for third base coach, let's find somebody that we like. Um, getting increased durability, I actually think could be nice. I don't love minus arm accuracy though. What about Brian Woodson? Some more fielding durability and speed. Kind of like that combination. We'll go a longer term deal here. Try to get another guy 1.5 million a year. Um, I, I think it could be a really good coach for us. Minus one blocking is not the worst. Thing to take a negative in so that will be what we're looking to replace these two guys with you have a couple guys you know one guy with c here um, he's not great but he's got one year left we can replace him next year rather than firing him now also don't love our farm director but these will give us some guys to replace next year for one year kevin newman is looking at four million dollars just to hopefully help him sign sooner. I'm gonna just give him an extra million. Uh, it's for one year and a year that we're not gonna be spending hardly any money. So I'm super comfortable with this offer. Pete Brown would accept our offer for pitching coach. We'd have to find a new guy here for our third base coach, but he's also pretty good. Offers some durability, fielding and arm strength. So I think it was a good pivot for us. Also a cheaper guy. We've got four guys on arbitration this year. I think we're going to offer arbitration first to Smelter. And then we're going to try to bring him back on one year. He wants 1.4 million. Or we'll offer him that. John Curtis, I think we're going to try to bring back as well. One year for him. He wants 910. Just make it a mil. 
Should sign that. We'll also offer him arbitration, 930, something like that. Michael Chavis. This one, we'll offer him like 800K arbitration. What does he want for one year? 1.8. Uh, we'll do one. Um, Carlos Perez, I also think is worth offering here. We'll go up to 850 here and then we'll do one year. Oh, 850. He should just accept that. We'll do 850 for both. And there you have it. Four guys we need to add to the 40 man roster if we don't want to lose them. Just off a quick glance. I'm thinking McMahon, Montgomery, and Jordan Beck will be guys that will add to the 40 because we don't want to lose them in the draft. Everyone else will probably just risk it. Zach Gallen headed to San Diego to play with the Padres. An interdivision move for the stud starting pitcher. Dylan Cease headed to the Angels. Of course, we know he should be on the Padres, but it is what it is. He's on the Angels now. Will Smith signing up with the Angels on a five-year, $80 million contract. So the Dodgers losing themselves a player, Ryan Helsey, to the Royals. And Chris Paddock to the Rangers. A big day in free agency. Three big names make it for Josh Naylor. Going to St. Louis Cardinals. Close, uh, starter, excuse me, Michael King to the Twins on a three-year deal. Kyle Tucker to the Pirates. And Bo Bichette to the Tigers. The draft lottery here is upon us. We have tied for the number one odds as we had, of course, the worst record. Already talked about it, so let's see. If that can result in the number one pick. Lottery underway. And we do nab number one. Let's go. We'll have the first overall pick for the first time in this series. Hopefully we get lucky and we get a generational prospect again. Because I'd love to take advantage of winning the lottery. You know, with 16.5%, it's not going to happen a lot in this series. I kind of, if I'm being honest, feel like those percentages aren't true in the game because I feel like the people with the 16 and percent at the top win it more often than you'd think mathematically, but maybe I'm wrong. And it's just the fact that I haven't actually simulated that many draft lotteries. It's rule five draft time. And for the most part, I think we're going to be sticking to pitchers this year. There's not really a need or position players, we can maybe draft one if there's one that we think is absolutely worth it in here. But so far, I'm not really seeing that to be the case. So we're going to stick with pitching. Now, Michael Kopech here, 29 years old, 76 overall with a potential. I mean, he was awful last year for sure, but giving him a chance is just something I think is going to be worth it for us. I mean, the next highest potential guy is somebody that we had on the roster last year in Brendan Beck. So I'm fine not bringing him back. Tyler Phillips could be an option at 70 overall as well. Uh, oh, his fastest pitch is 86 miles an hour. So I'm probably going to pass on that. So I think Michael Kopeck is going to be giving, giving a shot here in Colorado. Back around here for the next trip around. Phillips is still here, but I just think that lack of velocity is really going to hurt him. Now, Austin Cox is listed as a starter, but he has 34 stamina, so he's definitely a reliever, but could be interesting as a reliever. TJ Sikama here. Have to find ourselves somebody that we like. What about the bullpen here? Can Tony Santillan be a closer for us? I think it's worth giving him a shot. Let's draft him here. Round three, and we are back on the clock for some 
more picks. Some of these, you know, good players with upside or guys that we had on the roster last year that just didn't work out. Like Andrew Moore, here's the highest rated reliever. We took him off of the team because he was terrible for us last year. Let's go back to the starter. Well, I think we're going to get Cox here and have him be a reliever for us, of course. Back for round four. And what about a guy like Eric Lauer here? I think this is somebody, you know, a lefty that we could add to the rotation. I'm out Taylor Clark, 32 years old here, but all these, you know, per nines in the 60s, I think could work well with him. You know what? We released Andrew Moore last season because he didn't play well, but just looking at the available options, I think we're going to give him another chance with the team. We need to pick one more player here, and I think the last guy we're going to try out is Landon Sims. A little bit low on the walks per nine, but really good home runs per nine, solid velocity. Welcome to the team, Landon Sims. And that's going to pretty much wrap up what we're going to do, just mostly adding to the pitching. Um, as far as position player goes, we're, we've kept a lot of guys. We have some guys that will be invited to spring training, you know, some of those guys will be kept up so we should have a full position player roster ready to go and that'll do it for the offseason for us let's see if any more big signings happen around the league Devin Williams 31 year old closer here to a five-year deal with the Rangers Dustin May leaving the Dodgers for the Nationals at 28 years old the Dodgers have lost a couple of players here. Haven't really gotten anybody big to replace them. Vladimir Guerrero to the Twins. Was really hoping he could avoid the division, and he does. If he had signed with the Padres, that would have been nasty. And that will do it here for the offseason for our Colorado Rocky franchise. And we will be streaming spring training. It will come out either the day after this episode or two days after. I'll make sure to schedule it in advance for anyone who wants to hop in and see some of this team perform. Um, I kind of stated at the um, stats portion of this episode, but I think we're going to get... A spring training invite for Salas. So we'll see guys like Marillo, Dolander, Salas will be there. Kopech, you know, our biggest Rule 5 edition will be there. Um, other guys will be like Zach Veen will be there. Jordan Beck, Benny Montgomery. So we have some young guys that will be interesting to watch here in spring training. So we'll catch a few games on stream. I hope you will join us but that will do it here wrapping up season number two on our colorado rocky draft only franchise i'm excited to get season three underway which will be coming soon and i will see you then go rockies